What's going on, everyone? This is Nick with Return Them Right. It is 5.30 in the morning here on May 12th, and we're excited. We're in Panama City Beach. We're doing a little fishing with Captain Scott Nguyen. We've got Phil with Salt Squatch, Ryan Mori, Brent Shermer with uh, Sea Dude, and Rich with Fishaholic. So we're going to get out there. We're going to hopefully do some jigging, catch some red grouper and some scamps to keep. And if we uh, run into any gags, red snapper or other species, we'll be well equipped to send them back. But it's going to be a good day out in the water, so looking forward to seeing you out there. And they're all winter in. <laughs> really yeah. What do you say, first fish? How'd you do that? There we go. Nick's on. Getting some three. bait. Yeah. Some freshies. Going slow. Real and slow. Gotta get a couple on there if we can. Nick Solo's for $50 a dozen. 50 a dozen? Yeah. <laughs> I got a couple. All right, guys, we're out here. We're getting some hardtails for bait. We're doing, uh, gonna be doing a lot of jigging, but it doesn't hurt to get some big baits in case we run into some big fish. Um, so we just sabikied up a few, and we'll be headed offshore here in a minute. We just got out here, we're about 80 miles out in uh, 230 feet of water. We're dropping these jigs right here. And we're here with Nick from Return Em Right. And he's gonna talk to you guys a little bit about their program about safely releasing some fish here in the deeper water. So yeah, a lot of these offshore fish that you pull up from deep experience barotrauma. The gases expand in their body, they become bloated and they are unable to swim down on their own. So if you release them, they'll often float off on the surface and die unless you vent them or descend them. Uh, or do something to help them survive. So we're out here uh, catching fish, keeping fish, releasing fish, but we're making sure we take care of the fish we have to release. Yep. Perfect. And yeah, we're going to get on it. We're targeting, uh, to keep, we're targeting a uh, red grouper, maybe some black fin tuna. We already got some trigger fish in the box, but once we get some bycatch, like some uh, gag grouper or maybe some amberjack, then we'll go ahead and show you guys some of the devices that we use to safely uh, release them back to the depths. But let's get a jig back down there. All right, we got octopus jig going down. Saragossa. Big gag? Easy. Something smaller. Nick hooked up again. What you got for me, Ryan? Here, they call them hardtails. 
little blue runner. I'm gonna drop this down to the live feed. Is that another trigger? Looks like it. <laughs> Nick over here. Trigger. Got that one in the mouth, which is always a bonus. <laughs> On the octopus jig. We'll have to check if we have our boat limit or not, but it's either going on ice or we'll send him home. As you guys can tell, Captain Wynn has no good spots out here. <laughs> Been here here like two minutes. Everyone's already hooked up. There we go, we got a floater. Woo, look at that gag. That's a good gag. A good gag. Look at that gag. Brian just got a nice gag right there. Wow. These are out of season, aren't they? Yeah, Beautiful gag. Smoke it. Look at the size of that gag grouper. That's beautiful. That honestly could be my biggest gag grouper, too. That's just an absolute stud, man. It's a unit. Wow. Yeah, that is a fat fish. Yeah, when you pull these fish up from deep, you can see the stomach coming out of the mouth. That's from barotrauma. Uh, the gases expand in their body and it actually displaces organs. So we're going to clip this on a sequelizer descending device. Set to release at 150 feet. I had three pounds. I quickly put two more pounds on. So clip it on the lower jaw. See how you could hold the fish up by that? And you'll see, see how he's floating there? And then we'll just send him back with that weight. And it'll carry him back down to depth. And once it hits 150 feet, it'll pop off. Uh, and he'll recompress on his way down, so all those gases will go back to their normal state, and he'll be good to live. I just wanted to be known I got the first fish in the box. Did it work? Yeah. I threw an extra two pound on there just in case. Yeah, that fish is probably huge. Yeah. He was what, 16 pounds? 16. So I've noticed, there's no golden rule, but I've noticed about, I've noticed about a pound of weight will get five pounds of fish down, so. Okay. That three pound might have been good, but it doesn't hurt to have a little extra. Nick is hooked up. Looks like a good fish, Nick. Yeah. Most of them feel good pulling up from the Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little concrete. That actually might come up easier. I love grouper, man. Yeah, it's not really dogging me down. I don't know what it is. Come on, big red grouper would be nice. I don't know about this deep though. It's really not pulling much. You got color. <laughs> These triggers are wild. He might made it. Ooh, you hear that? Oh yeah. So that's all expanded gas in their body. They actually released some of it, but uh yeah, that's a beautiful trigger. They experience barotrauma as well. They do a pretty good job of once they get down surviving better, but uh Beautiful fish, I think we'll keep this one, throw it in the box. If you wanted to release this fish, would you vent or slow descend? Yeah, you could do either. Um, these ones, since they're kind of more torpedo shaped, if you vent them and get that gas in, they're pretty good at going down. So if you vent them quick and get them back in the water, they do pretty well. Or you can hook a descender on there and send them down. But this one's going in the box. We like to uh, either put them on ice or use the device. Another big trigger. Look at that thing. Hear the air coming out? 
Check this out. That's a big old trigger fish. He's not happy to see us, but we're happy to see him. These are actually very delicious fish. It's just um, some people turn their nose up at them because they're actually a little bit harder to clean. If you guys were able to feel this skin right here, pulling back on it, it's almost like sandpaper. It's real rough once you get that slime off of it. And the coolest thing about these fish, I don't know if you guys have seen this before, I'm forcing really, really hard on this thing. Can't move it, it's stuck. But if I press this thing, it's a little trigger and it'll pull down that fin. It's really, really cool. You could push as hard as you want it on that and you're not gonna get it to go, but doink, doink. It's on down, so. This guy's delicious. He's a little blown up from Veratrima, but unfortunately for him, we're not returning him with the return him right gear. We're keeping this guy for dinner. Got a good fish up, on the meat stick. Rich, what you got, buddy? Uh, something small again. Nothing too crazy. 80, 100 pound AJ's. <laughs> what do you have, just a hardtail in here? Yep. Oh, that big trigger fish. Yep. They're really being oh, feisty today. Yeah. Yeah, I got it on the vibe. Look at that, guys. Oh, excuse you. So this uh, trigger is suffering from a little fear of trauma, but this one is a keeper, so we're gonna throw him on the ice and keep him for dinner. All right, so we got this AJ here on the live bait. Nice fish. They do get barotrauma too, but this one looks pretty good, so we're just going to get it back in the water quick. Down he goes. Full sweat going. Yeah, what do we got there? We got limited triggers. Yeah. Limited triggers. One big gag. Big gag by Ryan. Check out the box, but pretty good first stop. Only spent about maybe 20 minutes here. And you can see we've got a nice box of fish. Monster triggers caught on jigs. Um, good start to the day. All right, so we're dropping some, we're gonna switch and try a cigar minnow. See what happens down there. See if we can't get a couple little scamps off the bottom. Oh, you got it? Yep. Uh -oh. It's not a big one, but maybe it's a scam. Dead weight, then it's scam. Yep. Come on, be a scam. I have to prove to Steve that I can get him past the sharks better than the electric reels. <laughs> Come on, scamp. Yeah, yeah. Good. Decent one. There you go. Nice. There we go. That's what we wanted. We got non-stop action out here. This is great. Bill's hooked up. Rich is hooked up to something big. My hand's a little shaky from fighting fish. Brand's hooked up. I just landed a nice scamp. <laughs> and another nice scamp. Look how hooked this guy. Let's see that thing. Look at that. Catch him how you can. Yeah. <laughs> Down by the skin. By the skin. So, Trying to save myself some cleaning time. Putting know. fish in the box with Captain Scott at Tail Hunter. Oh no way. Yep. That's Dude, a good that's one too. Yeah. African pompano. Yep. That's a huge oh, one. Oh, that's my first one ever. Yeah! Oh, Woo! Holy cow! Look at that! That was a big Yeah! <laughs> yeah! That's what I'm talking about! That's a good eat. Woo! That is awesome. Why didn't we make a category for that? <laughs> Dude, look at the blue lip. I know I look like a nerd. Dude, that is awesome fish. Nice work, Rich. Thanks. Yeah, if there's that one, it's definitely more. No way to even judge because it's a Yeah, he, was, he might be uh, around 20. All right, guys. My first ever African pompano on just this little nomad vibe. And we're just going to, oh, we got the pliers here. We're just going to pop it out right there. And I got the 60 pound boga. So we'll get a quick weight on her. 20 pound. Like 24 and a half. Oh, Ryan nice. was the closest, right? What'd you guess? 24, right? Yeah. All right. I did weigh it. Let me get this beautiful fish up. 
for a closer look there. I've been dreaming of catching a fish like this and it's crazy to just get one by surprise like that. It's so cool. Whew. And they're great eating, I guess. They're delicious. Oh, yeah. They're oh. one of the best fish to eat. So I'm excited. My arms are shot, but I think I'm ready Rich to catch is going some more to do fish. a catch and cook today. Woo. Let's do. Oh, so now I'm the chef too. That's right. <laughs> I'll do it. He's looking at me for my video. Rich, can you stop playing around with these fish, Brent? <laughs> I'm just having a great time out here. You know, this is making up for not going to the gym for a while. Come on, come on. Bringing them up. Don't have to do anything crazy like we talked about before. Just kind of bring them up. Nice and gently, just bouncing that jig on the bottom like I've been doing all morning. Let's uh, click that in, make it. Oh, Ryan's on a good one too. Double on, up. Buddy. Oh, rip and drag too, son. Mm, big, big hit on the bottom. I like that. I like it when it's right on the bottom, man. Typically, if you're getting them right down there, straight on the bottom, you have the chance that it's gonna be a real nice grouper. So we'll see what this ends up being. All right, Brent, what you got? You got color yet? You know, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> Too many options out here. I'm going, hopefully not a trigger. Ah, uh, it's too big to be a trigger. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. I say that and it'll be a trigger. Oh, here we go. Oh, how much top shot you got? Like 20, 25 oh, okay. feet. okay. He's under the boat, so be careful. Dig Oh! Guy. Beautiful. Got a good size gag. So right, right there, there. That is a good size gag hand. grouper. If I had to guess, probably around oh, look, 33, 34 inches. Right there on the, the jig. Got him with both the hooks right there. He smoked it. He's gonna show us what to do. All right, so we're just gonna clip this equalizer. It's a descending device on the bottom jaw there. You can see that stomach coming out of the mouth. That's from the expanded gas. You see he's floating, floating there. So if we were to just release him on the surface, he would float off and die. So we have him hooked up on the descending device and we're just gonna lower him down here. And this so this weight will carry him down to the bottom, and once it hits 150 feet, it'll pop off. All those gases will recompress naturally, and he'll be good to go. Perfect. That's what you wanted. Okay, Rich. Rich is over here playing with some fish. Yeah. It happened again where I had a small fish eat the lure, and I'm reeling him up, and then something big ate him. Just keep that shark occupied for me. <laughs> I'll try my best. I was gonna say, that looks the amberjackish. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh. Time to kick. Oh no. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Bonita. Oh no. 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 You got charged? Yeah. All right, we're on each other's line. All right, we, uh, Ryan just caught this, what would have been. My biggest gag grouper of all time. Yeah, you can see that. And now it's half of my biggest gag grouper of all time. Yeah, these sharks can be a real problem out here in the Gulf sometimes. So we're moving to a different spot, trying to avoid them. Uh, it's tough sometimes, but we do what we can. We got a big hardtail on here. We're in about 250. We're gonna see if we can get a big AJ up off the bottom. Probably we'll get wrecked. We'll see. All right, Nick, we're Eat rolling. Up. I dropped a big hardtail down. Oh, and we're trying to get this fish past the sharks. Trying to crank it up quick. Still fighting. 
Might be big gag, maybe. Maybe big red snapper. Either way, we don't want we don't want the sharks to get it. Come on, come on up. Come on. Now it's coming up pretty easy. Maybe a grouper. Oh, is it just the AJ, a smaller AJ? Yeah, you always get the AJs in the boat. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing, the sharks like the taste of grouper better. But I guess so do we, so. Jack. Yep. There we go. Uh, you want me to hold the weight? Oh, you want to do it? Yeah, just get this one. Ready? Yep. Back he goes. It's the quickest way to get those ones back. Looks like Ryan's got a... another ARS. Nice red. Big fatty. Out of season. Beautiful American red snapper, man. These things are very amberjack-like in the way that they fight. Because they fight you almost all the way up. This fish never really started floating. Bam. All right, Captain Scott is gonna vent him. So right there, right behind that pectoral fin, bam. I don't know if you guys heard that, but he just deflated, all that air came out. Those venting tools are very, very easy to use. Now he's able to compensate, and let's watch him. Whoa, see that? He was very docile until we got that air out of him. Then he just flopped right out of my hands, back down to the depths to be caught another day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you gonna hold it up sideways? I don't know. We just dropped the red grouper down and we're gonna quickly hold on, hook on this big red and send that one home too. Easy as that. Good scamp, Nick. Woo. The best there we the go. Day. That's what we're looking for. Oh yeah. Beautiful fish. Got stomach coming out of the mouth. Circle hook right in the corner. And good eating, so we're throwing him in the box. All right, we just made a run about 20 miles in a little shallower. Uh, how deep are we right here? Still about 200. Okay, about 200, but this is apparently more of a red grouper spot, so we're gonna see if we can get on some of those. Uh, they're in season right now, you just need to be uh, 20 inches, so we're dropping jigs, we're dropping bait. Let's see what happens. Bada bing, bada boom. Clip them in. Bam, clipped in just like a boger grip. Got three pounds of lead on here, and we are good to go. Put the reel in free spool. Bam, and he's going down to the depths. And he's gonna swim off, you know? To grow a little bit bigger and then hopefully someone gets to keep them one day. Red grouper there. Basically crushing that little artificial. As soon as it gets to the bottom, I don't even have to jig it to work it to you know give it any action. They're just hitting it on the drop. Pretty cool. Little red grouper going down. Doesn't feel too big, whatever this is. Come on. 
Uh, yeah, hold on. We got a cluster of stuff going on here. <laughs> oh, it's getting oh, in. <laughs> so, right here we have a American Red on a fish saver descending device. So we're gonna send this guy down. All right, Phil, All right. what do we got going on? Hooked up to something big off the bottom. It's it's a lot of dead weight right now. Whatever it is, it's big. I think I'm rubbing on it. At first I thought it was a grouper, but I'm not sure if I just got sharked or what. It's taking line. I would not be surprised if I just got sharked. Yeah, it went from feeling grouper-like to steady line. Yep. Yeah, I think it might have turned Mr. Gray. Ah. That was a good hit, too. What do you got, a dude? I got something. I might be on eight now. Jake started picking yeah. up a little action here. Come on. Oh, yeah. Now you can breathe. Now I can breathe. There's leader. Looks like him. Red grouper. Red grouper. Oh, yeah. I got someone's line. There we go. That's what you wanted. That's what we were looking for. Nice. What pound are we looking at? We are looking at 14 pounds. 14 pound red grouper, dude. 14 pounds right there. Woo! That's my biggest red grouper I just got. Dude, you <laughs> earned it. Absolutely annihilated. You earned it. Right Hold there. him up. Let me see that thing. But that is Woo! definitely my biggest red grouper I've ever caught right there. On the jig, too. That is so sick. That's why we came here a little bit shallower for, for. So let's see if we can get on him. Seems like people are getting bit. Look at that belly. Dude, That's you can literally gnarly. see the gas like bubbling. How big was he? Wicked. About 14 pounds. All right, so we're here with Nick from Return Em Right. It's an organization that's really kind of focused on making sure you guys know how to properly release these offshore fish. Um, I'm sure you can explain it a little bit more if you want to yeah, get after it. Yeah, we're all about being a resource for anglers, making sure they know how to release fish, whether it's venting properly or descending fish if they're suffering from barrel trauma. When you pull them up from deep, they'll float off. So we want to eliminate waste in the fish or at least reduce it the best we can. Um, so you got... Uh, training online only takes 15 minutes and you get free gear if you fish in the Gulf of Mexico for reef fish. And yeah, we're here to be a resource to help save fish for the future. Yeah, I mean, conservation is the way to go. And if you guys want to check them out, uh, we'll have their website linked in the description down below. Or you can find them on their socials at Return Them Right. And you can DM this man and he'll he'll be the one that responds to you. So, thank you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's a yeah. fun day out here. Oh, yeah, we killed it. Yeah, PB's all around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, as you while can we, see. <laughs> while we were filming the, the closing. Yeah, while we were filming the closing of that little uh, talk about Return Them Right. As you can up. tell, he's a fisherman. He knows what he's doing. He's got something on right here. We'll What'd you drop this, down? This was um, a blue runner or a hardtail, as they call them up here. Yep. So we'll see what it is. Could be a grouper, could be a snapper. We'll find out. Stay tuned. We're in about 200 feet. <laughs> <laughs> red grouper. Oh, nice oh, red grouper. Yeah. Yeah. While we're filming the clothes and we get a keeper red grouper, look at that. One last one for the box. It's a heck of a day I'm offshore. Fish on mine. It's it is. All right guys, if you're headed offshore, um, you're fishing in depths over 50 feet, you want to be prepared to get those floaters back down, whether it's with venting tools. So this is a commercially available venting tool or using descending device, it's often safer. There's lots of options, inverted hook styles, lip grip styles. This is a fish shaver, Roy's fish shaver. This is Shelton's fish descender, and this is a sequelizer device that you simply pop on the lower jaw of the fish, and it releases based on pressure. You'll see we use those a bunch today. These are all great options to mitigate barrel trauma. They're all available to you, or you could make both these yourself at home, too. So if you're headed offshore, be prepared and help those floaters get back down so we can catch them again in the future. Let's go. Packing up and rise on again. Last fish of the day. <laughs> I was about to hop in. Steve's feeding the shark, getting them ready for me. <laughs> it's closing time out here in the middle of the Gulf. <laughs> I'm so 
Yeah. My body is so beat up <laughs> fighting these fish. All right, guys, we're wrapping up out here. It was a great day offshore with Scott Newham with Tail Hunter Charters. Ryan Mori here. I think he won the tournament today, and he also might have gotten his PB gag head. Uh, Definitely PB gag head. <laughs> PB gag head and maybe PB gag. We all caught a bunch of fish here with salt squash fill. Brent, I believe, caught three PBs and his first yeah, AP. First, first AP. Yeah. Um, Rich, I don't know how many new species you caught today. Uh, I got a, a red snapper, scamp, red grouper, and the African pompano, which really made the trip for me. That was awesome. Yeah, that was an awesome fish. And we filled up the box and we made sure that everything we released made it down. We got scamps, we got red grouper. We've got trigger fish at the bottom, APs. We got a full box today. So awesome trip out here. Captain Scott Nguyen with Tail Hunter always puts us on the fish. Um, one of the best trips of the year every time I come out with him. All right, guys, that's a wrap from Panama City Beach here. I can't thank Captain Scott enough for an amazing trip with Tail Hunter Charters. He always puts us on fish. It's a trip of a lifetime. We all went home with a ton of scamp. We had African pompano, red grouper, mangrove snapper, everything you could want offshore. Got into a bunch of big red snapper and big gags that we released with descending devices and venting tools. Absolutely awesome day, perfect weather, and just beautiful here in Panama City Beach. So we're gonna get cleaned up, cook some fish, and enjoy the fruits of the Gulf of Mexico.